Okay guys, so I'm going to go over some of the ways we can do side chain compression inside Logic using the stock plugins. Um, seems there's some confusion. It did change like 18 months ago uh, and a lot of the older videos are the ones that pop up. So hopefully this will sit up in there and help a lot of you guys out. So previously we could only do it channel to channel and we could only do it using audio channels. You can now use any audio signal as a side chain process. Um, so I've literally got this sketch here that I was working on and I'm going to show you how I could individually sidechain the bass, uh, use it on an aux as well or use an aux as a sidechain to another aux. Completely possible to do now whereas it wasn't prior. So the first one we'll do is the classic uh, kick drum to sidechain a bass drum. So I'm hoping that up here is going to be a kick since I've named it kick. Happy days. Uh, Logic says that this is probably going to be some kind of bass line. Cool. So we can see I've got these three different sounds together here that make our bass line and a kick drum. And that's all that's going to play for the minute just for this example. So the main part of the bass is actually this top line just here. That wouldn't necessarily get too much in the way. We'd probably want to actually do it on the sub channel, but for context, you guys can hear this on whatever medium you're listening to. We'll do it on this ripper sound here. Now I've got a compressor in the chain already and we could use this compressor as the side chain to the kick. This bit's really, really simple. This is how we would have done it in the past. So if you haven't got this black bar across the top, there's a little gray icon just in the top right here. We're going to click on that and we've got our sidechain input here. If we choose this little guy, we can then choose kick here. And quite simply now, that kick is going to trigger this compressor. Now some things to note, you'll quite often have something called auto gain switched on, which will end up sounding like this. We don't necessarily want to do that. We actually want to probably keep it around zero and not gain it up eight at all. And we just want that dip to occur. Um, in terms of timing of the track, you can really work it out as much as yourself. Auto is usually pretty good at picking up a nice release time. Uh, just listen to it. If you want the kick to smash straight through instantaneously, you could go to zero milliseconds. Now that's dropping out far too much. It's taking out like 15 dB. Um, you can gauge it between the threshold and the ratio as to how much you want it to dip out. So you can hear now that kick drum takes the bass out of the way just for a moment. What we'll do, we'll copy this over to the sub because the sub's really what would be fighting with that kick. So we're now here that we've got the same thing going on on the sub. And everything's moving around that kick drum. Let's take these off. And you can hear now that the bass doesn't get dipped, it doesn't move. When we bring them back in, it moves everything out of the way. So that's one way that we can do this. And what we do, we will disable that compressor. And now we'll look at doing it on an aux. So instead of having these two independent ones being controlled by the kick, and perhaps we want to control the uh, kick and the snare and get the same thing going that way. So I've made a separate aux here called K and S, which should have the kick and the snare pattern going to it. And what we're going to do is make a separate one for the bass and the sub. So we can highlight those two channels where it says stereo out. We're going to go bus. We're going to make it bus four. We'll get a new auxiliary here and we'll just rename it bass real quick. So now we've got these two together. That's all well and good. Uh, they're still fighting for space. What we want to do is use that kick and snare to make space each time one of them triggers. So we're going to pop a compressor on our newly made bass aux here. We can do it by clicking on the little bar just at the top here. And we'll set this up from scratch. Now, I personally like to use the Studio Fat. It's a little bit noisy and uh, it, I just like the way it works. 
Use whichever one you prefer. The Platinum Digital is probably going to be your cleanest. Um, I just like the Studio Fet. It's the one that I work with. Make your own choice. So in the sidechain menu, we need to do something a little bit differently this time. We want that kick and snare to be our trigger. So in the sidechain, we're now going to find the one that goes to it. And we've got med kick, med snare, and audio five all going to this bus two. That's going to be our K and S bus named bus two. And if we have a look on our channel here, K and S is bus two. Perfect. So K and S will now trigger our compressor. <laughs> That's really not behaving how we want. We're going to have a really, really fast attack here, but we're going to need quite a fast release because it's got to recover in between each sound. And as well, we don't want necessarily everything triggering it. We just want the fundamentals really triggering. Our snare is going to have a higher fundamental than the kick drum, but it's going to sort of taper off probably around 200 hertz. So we're going to make use of the sidechain menu in the top here of the compressor. We're going to switch filter to on. We're going to leave it on low pass and we're going to dial it back to sort of 250 maybe. Somewhere around there. So any higher sounds that for whatever reason are in there aren't going to cause the trigger, just that low body. So we can now see two separate triggers really happening and it's going too far on the snare. So we're going to reduce the threshold. Remember, we said about auto gain before, we want that off now. And we're going to make sure this is still set to zero. And there we go. We've got an auxiliary controlling another auxiliary and using a side chain going to that. So the kick and the snare now both control this compressor really easily without having multiple compressors set up. And that, ladies and gents, is how you can do various types of sidechaining inside Logic. I hope the video was helpful for you, and I will see you guys on the next one.